Doodle bud. Today, we got a wicked treat, a very first for my channel, a gift pen from a viewer and subscriber. Let's check this out. So this was very unexpected, but really appreciated. Uh, first for me, and I want to thank the person who sent this to me. They wanted to stay anonymous, so that's totally cool. We uh, we actually corresponded, got to know someone. So this is so more than I thought would ever happen with my channel. That uh, you know, one connecting with the with the viewers in that, which has been great through comments, and uh, the odd person has reached out through email. So that's great. And then someone sent me a gift pen. So this was amazing. Let's get to this. It came from the good people at Peyton Street Pens. And uh, let's pop it open. It says right here, the right way to fill your triumph. So a cool vintage pen, a triumph, uh, well, Schaefer's Triumph Vac Filler. So this is really cool, man. Like I, I again, I'm, st I'm still speechless and you know who you are. Again, thanks so much. And also to everyone else who's been watching and subscribing and, and leaving comments and all that stuff. So... That's been wicked. This has been lots of fun. It's been just over one year for me doing the channel. So thanks again to everybody. Back to the pen. Little cool little, you know, vintage pen. So they're they're kind of small. Like where's my uh, Pelican? Here's my 140. And here's this guy, the Schaefer Triumph Vac Filler for comparison. It's a little bit bigger. But uh, I've just been really into vintage pens lately. And I actually had a friend recommend I get a Schaefer with a fine nib. And it was for the exact same reason that this viewer recommended because I got to do a lot of paperwork and a lot of forms and I need to kind of press through, like press actually fairly firm. So when I do that type of work, I need a fine, but I also need a nail because uh, I got to go through multiple carbon copies and I did a video on that and, uh, you know, they paid attention and, and said, you know, I think you would like this type of pen with this type of nib. And it's the exact same thing a friend of mine's been recommending who services and sells vintage pens. So, yeah, you're spot on, bud. So, again, thanks, thanks a bunch. So let's run you through it. A uh, little, little brown pen. You know, it's not winning uh, Sexiest Pen of the Year Award. We've got all sorts of cool materials now in, in modern pens, right? But... It doesn't matter. Like if they, if they look cool, that's awesome. But the biggest thing is how do they perform? And uh, let's check it out. And also, how is it built well? That's all the things I want to know all the time. Does it work well? Is it built well? Will it last? Vintage. That's sort of a giveaway that if it's been around this long, it's going to last. Uh, nice little clip on here. Nothing too crazy. Nothing over the top design wise, but works really well. It's got the little white dot on there. We got a nice little gold cap band. We follow down. We have the imprint. Uh, if I can find it, they're always tough to read a little bit. Here, let me zoom in. Okay, that's a little better. We got Schaefer Pen Co. from Fort Madison, Iowa, USA. Continuing on, we got the knob here in the back for the vac filler. We'll talk a little more about that. And uh, yeah, there's lots of nice little details. I saw about this pen. I was really surprised because it's a bit of a sleep. There's no you know crazy fanciness going on other than it's a nice solid little pen. But uh, that, that's actually good because it's led me to not so much be distracted by a crazy material, but to really focus on little details. And the details are pretty cool. Uh, one of which, it, that's easy to spot, is right here on the section here. Let me post it because it's a smaller pen, but uh, it does fit just fine once you post it. Um, it's, it's got these little ridges here on the section. So it kind of keeps your hand in place, you know, so it doesn't slide and uh, helps with a little bit of grip and then it makes a cool sound listen let me get it right close to the mic here because sometimes i put this against my ear and i just do this <laughs> anyways uh let's continue on it has a gold nib so that again you shouldn't have but thanks so much buddy uh so it's got schaefer's registered in us it's got a patent office there made in usa 14k so you know two-tone and you normally you don't see two-tone like this it's kind of mixed around with modern day pens but they just whoosh, whoosh, at the top and the rest gold in the bottom a nice little feed believe it's ebonite and uh, let's go along we got little this i'm gonna talk about this thing it's really cool but the uh, threads are right here in the section they blend in no problem you don't even feel them at all it actually kind of goes with that because it's got ridges already slight step up and then we got the pen body 
Here's the cap in the back. Now I'll see if I can capture this on camera. So this is almost a bit of an illusion. So when you rotate it, it looks like the length of the ridges are changing. Let's see if you can see this. It looks like they're changing length, like it gets longer as it gets to the light. And that's just because of the curvature, so it's actually kind of interesting to look at. Um, but yeah, it's just really all it is. It's just a little grip to help you open this up. There, to make it easier. It's nice. So again, nice little detail. That just gets molded in when they do this part. Up it goes. Here, let's get the zoom down a bit. And uh, you got your vac filler rod. It's got the little nut in there, kind of like you might see on a Pilot 823, but plunge it down, tighten it up. There you go. Nice control on the seam. Almost, you know, almost can't feel it, but pretty darn close. So really good quality there. Um, then cap, there's a cap liner in here, but I'm gonna talk about this whole setup with the threads. This is the first I've seen for this type of design. Okay, so let's check this out. So if I open this up and uh, slide this ring back, this is really interesting stuff. So if you zoomed in, there's like a spline here. Okay, so this that's just part of the molding when they inject this part. And if I can get the light and focus just right. Okay, I apologize for the shaking, but it's hard to get. But you can see there's some little splines on the inside of this ring as well. Because what this ring's going to want to do, because this is part of the cap and it threads, it's going to want to spin. So to avoid that, they just you just pop it on. It's going to fit on any one of those ridges. There you go. Now this thing ain't going to spin. So yeah, for me, that was a really interesting detail because there's lots of ways to solve that problem. One, it will get compressed just as you tighten up the body there in the section, but that's a stupid way to do it. Like that's bonus force on holding it from stopping to spinning. You need to, to stop it rotating not, and you don't want to squish two things together you know, to stop something from rotating, uh, if you have other ways. So here we got, you know, though that spline there. So that's just there and that's doing it because the, you know, this wouldn't work if this spun and you put it into here, it's not working. So really smart solution because a lot of times what you end up doing with something like this is you might use some epoxy and that's fine if you're making 10 of these pens, but when you're going to make 10,000, a hundred thousand of these pens, that's a terrible way to secure it. That's a really bad option. And there's so much labor involved. There's so many steps. You got to prep the surfaces, clean them, mix the epoxy, put not too little, not too much. Oh, you got excess. You got to wipe it off. There's just so many steps. It's got to dry. You know, there's so many things that could go wrong and the epoxy not being mixed properly, all that stuff. You have a bad batch. Who knows? Um, so it's a bad way to do it if you can avoid it. So that was a really, really smart solution solution to do that. And this little uh, ring too. So it's, you know, part of the design, but it's also got the threads on it. So it's very cheap to put threads onto this pen. You just can make a whole, these probably, I think they just get stamped sort of by the look of it. So that's a very fast operation instead of, you know, having to send it through another step in the manufacturing. And then it goes into this, this piece here. So this whole piece is uh, the brown plastic of the body. And then this band, and I think it all gets fit together into one shot as well. Here, let me put the flash back on. Go, I apologize, I don't have good lighting, but um, so this edge is just rolled over and it's really good job. It's not, you know, it's a crisp edge, but it's not sharp. There's no burr and that's important because when you post it, you don't wanna just uh, sacrifice the pen and scratch the hell out of it. Um, it fits on there really, really well. And this is crazy as well. It's totally concentric. So when I rotate the pen, uh, the cap is on there perfectly concentric, which is really nice. And it doesn't leave any scratches and is really secure. So that's a good job there. Um, but what they do is, uh, I'm trying to get you some focus. There we go. So this is all, this will just slip onto the end here and also inside right into the main part of the the pen cap and again i don't know if you can see it because it's just tough to get the lighting but there's a couple little uh so it's round but they put a couple little slices along the edge so it gives a little spring effect to keep it in there too so it's just really nice little details those are the things i like a lot so there's lots of these little details on this pen and how they made it and how the threads go together same thing here too how they thread on again when you rotate the pen this way 
you look at that edge, it's completely concentric as well. It's not off. It's bang on. You, it might look like it's moving just with the lighting, but the gap between the edge of the band and the body does not change. So really good job all together on making those two parts mate properly, which centers the pen and just stuff like that. I geek out on all the time. The pen also comes with its own scroll. It tells you how to fill the pen to do the the vac filler. It's pretty straightforward, like with other ones. And uh, it, you know, that's I love when they do that old timey kind of stuff. They put triumph in quotation marks to make it stand out. It's a bold name, the triumph. It's a wicked car and a hilarious insult comic dog. This and that's just a cool detail by Peyton Street doing something like this. So they get sent an old type of vintage style paper. Obviously, you know, they make most likely they make a copy of this and print it out like that to make it look like it's the original. But that's just a nice detail by Peyton Street and include in a box. It doesn't have original box, no problem, but they have their own kind of cool box that is you know, uh, around that type of era, around that age. As a bonus, we also have this little book. It's Ayush Paper from India. It's a gift. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Uh, found uh, pen friendly paper, A4 and A5 top spiral notebooks that they got in different styles. So look at that. There's a promo code for everyone watching. So uh, if you type in promo code Ayush, you save 11 bucks on orders over 100. You got to be registered there and uh, expires end of the year. So we'll pass that on. Let's read about this here too. Let's, uh, reasons you'll love the book. Oh, is it a top 10? Top nine reasons you'll love this book. Natural shade paper, no feathering, no bleeding handles, flex nibs. Well, show sheen of ink, moderate drying time, minimal show through. Both sides are completely usable. Nine mil gap on the lines. You loved the tactile feeling of writing. This book is for you, my friend. Let's try it out. 100 GSM, 50 pages. There's the contact info on there. Okie dokie. A huge paper. They got a YouTube. The same for the website. And they got an Insta as well. So I, we're going to have a double review. The paper and the pen. Let's do this. Thought I would switch it up today for size comparison. It's an all vintage edition. These are all my vintes. Let's say hi to the vintes. So starting off, we got this uh, Russian Soyuz pen, 70s-ish. We got a Mont Blanc 24, a Rower 88 vintage, Pelican 140, the Little Schaefer Triumph, Jet Esterbrook J Series, Parker 51. Am I crazy? North Korean pen. By the way, there's some more little weird things on here. I talked about being concentric earlier with the Schaefer. This one, not at all. If I get some focus over here. Here we go. Let's rotate it. You can see the bulge already. You know, that's what she said. But yeah, it's just not there. It Even when you roll the pen, you can feel it's not concentric at all. Uh, another detail. You know, this is uh, the paint that they're using on here or plating or coating. You can see the surface prep on here is just terrible. It was not done right at all. It's chipping off just from a mild interaction with this collar as well. And then, uh, you know, so they went straight to this kind of clutch system with those springy bits on the inside like they do with a lot of these pens. Like I say, a Parker 51. But then they used a super soft plastic, so it just scratches it like crazy. You can see all those linear scratches on there, just like mad. So more funny little things, like this is off just a smidge. Not much, but it's off like about a one and a half degrees or so. It's just off a, a touch as well. There's just so many little things about this pen that they're trying to make it look fancy, but they can't build it worth crap. So... Unique little pen with the weird nib and everything else. All right, back to the Schaefer's. Also, I thought the Schaefer was a good occasion to use this Monte Grappa pen case I got with my Elmo. I haven't used it yet. It's made in Italy. And, uh, you know, I, I, it also made me think of a crazy little story. These two pens go well together. So I thought, here's maybe Hans from Hanover, Germany meets Veronica from Fort Madison, Iowa, and they end up meeting because they're staying at the same hostel in Italy, and they become lovers. Whoa, look at that. Plot twist. Little do they know, their grandfathers fought each other in the war. <laughs> it's like an Alfred Hitchcock kind of turn. Schaefer pen, Schaefer ink, Schaefer black. 
Ayush paper. Let's do this. Let's see how we do. So this is the Schaefer. This thing just is fantastic. Triumph. And this has got the vac fill. 14K. Assuming this is a fine nib. As far as variation, none. But that's, you know, that's what I want. It's just a very consistent line. Like, no matter what you do, where you go, what you write, you're getting the exact same line all the time. It's really, really good pen. This has great ink flow, very smooth for a fine nib, consistent line width. I find my uh, my printing is a little better with this one versus uh, my cursive. It's okay. It's just I find other pens I do a little better with cursive, but this is mostly going to be a printing pen for my paperwork and documents and forms as well. They do not want me doing any cursive on there. So it's just a very, you know exactly what it's going to do. And for a lot of times you want a pen like that. If you're an artist, you don't want to be guessing on your line widths and how it changes. You want a very specific uh, tip, a very specific line width as well that you know it's going to do. So that's great for art and just stuff that I mentioned if you're filling in forms and documents as well. As far as the paper, it's doing no problem at all. It says if you love the tactile feel of writing, this one definitely has a little more feel to it. I'll go on some Rhodia in a second with the pen that said it can handle flex. So let's uh, let's throw a flex at it. We got a 912 FA nib. Okay, yeah, handle that. Then we got <laughs> let's let's do a size comparison while we're at it. So this is the jumbo ACR off the frame. I gotta put it back this way compared to this little Schaefer. But this has an oblique Double broad that I, well, double broad that I ground with the oblique. Let's see what handles this one. This is a very wet nib as well. Yep, the paper handles it no problem as well. But as it does mention, it has that tactile feel. So you do feel it more. So for some folks, too smooth can be tricky with the writing. So yeah, if you find some papers too smooth, but other ones then aren't fountain pen friendly. This is, yeah, there you go. This is a perfect paper for that. But now if we rip out the Rhodia, this is a very smooth nib, very good writer. Wetness is really nice. The line is even more crisp. I find that other paper, it absorbs a little more, but it doesn't feather. But yeah, it's just, uh, this is a printing expert pen. If you want to get like that super micro printing, let's see if I can do that. If you happen to be one of those super teeny tiny micro very small printers, this uh, this pen will work for that. Let's just check reverse how we do as well. It's it's pretty good for reverse. I've been using this. Not so much in reverse, but if you had to back it up and go in reverse, there you go. So all in all, Wicked good little pen. Quick update on the Ayush paper. You can see we put it with some very wet pens. Wet ink, heavy duty load on there. No feathering at all. It handled everything it gave. And uh, for bleed through, yeah, that is really good. So paper does exactly what it says. If you want something with a little more, uh, like you said, tactile feel versus ultra smooth, but handles everything you can put at it. Good stuff. There we go. There you have it. We had a lot go down on that uh, video with that review. And thanks again. You know who you are. I love chatting with you. We talked life a little bit, so that was cool. But that's it for now. Thanks again, Peyton Street, for having such an exceptional pen. And uh, we even had a little surprise love story happen. So I guess all we can do now is say, hey, thanks for watching. Likes and comments and subscribes are awesome. And we'll get you next time.